What is up, y'all? This is the TT Artisan 27mm f2.8 for the Fujifilm system. And it is probably the best budget lens that you can get. I got mine for around $130 on eBay. It is very tiny. Almost a pancake lens. It has a clicked aperture. Still has the focus ring on the front. <clears throat> no switches. It's too small for that. And it has really good image quality. So the autofocus tracking does a pretty good job on it, especially for the Fujifilm system. It has great color rendition. Um, it is tack sharp. And for 130 bucks, you're not going to beat this lens. So I got mine off of eBay, like I said. Um, if you get it from a like manufacturer or like Adorama or something like that, you're going to spend around $160, $170 for it. But worth every penny. I will say my package came with a UV filter, which I'm typically not a big fan of, but we're using it for the time being, and a microfiber cleaning cloth too, so perks for ordering from eBay. And this is actually the limited edition color in yellow and red. So this is number 1630 out of 2000. So only a few of these made essentially, and it's worth every penny in my opinion. It does have a little lens hood on it. That is this red piece right here. Um, comes off fairly easily. Actually, just kind of snaps on there for the most part. Uh, so watch that. You might lose it, but I've yet to have it fall off the camera. Uh, let's go ahead and hit the field. I'm gonna show you some images. These are all gonna be straight out of camera um, <clears throat> using the Kojak Gold film simulation. So. Just another little like review in there. Kojak Gold Film Simulation looks brilliant. I love it. Uh, before we dive in, I do want to say it does have some pretty heavy vignetting, uh, just you know, around the corners of the frame. It's not anything that's not fixable in post, but it is very noticeable. Not a huge deal to me because I typically tend to add vignette in post anyway, so it is what it is. Um, but. Just something to be aware of if that's something you don't like. All right, so it's sunset, as you can see. Um, I have the TT Artisan 27 millimeter 2.8 on the Fuji. I've got Jennifer here. And we're gonna take some test shots. I have a Kojak Gold, which is a film simulation loaded onto it. I think it's based on like classic chrome. So we're gonna take some shots. I'm gonna record the screen and do some video and report back in with how we think it performed and everything, so. It is. All right, so thoughts. Um, focuses pretty well. A lot faster than I would expect for a hundred and I paid hundred and twenty dollars for this lens it seemed to render images pretty well what I did notice and this could just be the film simulation that I have on I do have it recording raw files as well so we'll check those when we get back to the computer but seemed to be a little bit more grainy than what I'm used to I do think it captured like the contrast really well it seemed to have like pretty decent micro contrast the autofocus while it was accurate and fast, it definitely was loud. So I don't think it's anything that would like affect video unless you do have like a, like a shotgun mic that might pick it up, but I could definitely hear it too, just like walking around over top of my footsteps. Uh, 
Color-wise, I think it rendered image color pretty well, but we do have a really, really beautiful sunset going on back here. Uh, it was not loud enough to affect that deer. So that's pretty cool. Um, I guess she's been hanging out in the background the whole time. And yeah, that's my favorite thing about coming to these kind of places is like, we get to shoot stuff and you know, we're, record these reviews and enjoy being outside but like there's nothing that compares to like that sunset homegirl just walking down in the back of the field and then of course getting to take pictures of her so that's it for the field um, we're gonna go ahead back review these images on the computer and take a look at them look them over throw them into Lightroom and edit the raw files as well as look at how they came out in straight JPEGs. So could just be something that I was seeing on the Atomos as well that maybe it was adding a little bit more grain. So uh, let's go ahead and head back to the office. Right, so as you saw there, out in the field it performs pretty well, especially considering it's only a $150 lens. Um, I got nothing but good things to say about the TT Artisan. This is the first lens that I've used from this company, so <clears throat> can't comment on the quality of any of the other ones thus far. I will be ordering more from them, potentially. Uh, I've got my eyes on, I think they have like a 12 millimeter or something like that. I'm not gonna, you know, don't quote me. But I've got some other lenses that I wanna try out on the Fuji first. Um, mainly the 75 millimeter Viltrox. Uh, that thing looks pretty gnarly. But a couple little quirks that I want to talk about with this thing. Um, so it is able to be updated through a USB-C port um, that connects to the bottom of the lens, which then fires on the pins. Um, not compatible with Mac computers. Just found this out while trying to update it. So just a heads up for Mac, Mac users out there. If you're a Windows person, no issues. Uh, for some reason, no supported capabilities with Mac as of right now. Don't think that's a huge deal. Um, I guess it could affect if they do come out with any like autofocus updates or anything like that later on down the road, but didn't seem to notice any you know inconsistencies with, with autofocus or anything like that. Uh, it does focus a little bit loud, but I mean, what can you expect from basically a pancake lens? Uh, as stated earlier, the focusing ring on it is a little... I don't even want to say tight. It's just not the smoothest, but it is accurate. Uh, I didn't have any issues with the autofocus anyway, but I know a lot of guys like to drive manual focus. I have uh, stubby little fingers and had a hard time getting a grip on it and you know making it movable with how small of a package that lens is plus how small of a package the XS20 is. So something to keep in mind if you got big meaty claws. Uh, otherwise, you know, as we covered, the clicked aperture is nice. Uh, it is a little bit tight, but that's something I think it's going to break in as you know time goes on. We'll we'll comment back on that at a later time. But it looks great. The build quality is solid on it, and it is an all metal body. Um, it does feel a little bit cheap compared to something like the you know the thirteen millimeter Viltrox that we have on here right now. Uh, this thing is solid. But it is an all-metal body, so just something to think about. Um, yeah, I don't know. So one more cool factor with this lens, other than it being, you know, yellow and red. it If you throw, like, a silicone body cover on almost any of your Fujis, this thing's going to have, like, a real cool, like, old-school toy camera look to it. So if that's something you're into, you know, I've thought about doing it just because it's kind of eye catching. And then, you know, I don't like silicone grip covers because I have a condition called hyperhidrosis and I sweat the second anything rubbery touches me. But something cool to think about. Um, it will add a layer of protection. It matches really nicely with that yellow and red. And I, I've seen a few pictures of it. They look pretty cool. Do you have any questions about the TT Artisan 27mm f2.8? Um, I think I covered everything here, and this is probably like a short and sweet video.
but sound off in the comments if you got any questions about it uh i'll you know throw maybe some more images up here i've not had it out a whole lot yet so i don't have like a month of experience with it or anything i strictly took it out of the box and i've maybe shot with it two or three times so maybe we'll check back in on it i have a few other things that i'm using a little bit more often on the fuji right now notably the fringer uh adapter so i can use all of my canon glass um, all my EF Canon glass, which we're shooting on a new lens right now, just as a heads up. It's the uh, EF 16 to 35 IS, or not IS, non IS, sorry, I stand corrected, but the version three. So that's going to go on the Fuji probably on the next adventure, just because it's going to look funny. But uh, usually the EF 50 millimeter 1.8 and stuff like that. And that fringer adapter is a phenomenal accessory to have if you're a Fuji film owner. And a Canon owner like myself. I don't know if you're familiar with how renowned uh, Canon glass is, but it's probably some of the best in the business, if not the best in the business. Color rendition's great. So having that accessible, which is, you know, my favorite lenses accessible on one of my favorite cameras, uh, it's a pretty cool combo and it, it works really well. So that's going to be coming here soon. Uh, I've actually had more time with the Fringer than I have with the TT Artisan, but I wanted to get this one out here because it's it's a cool little lens. I think it's going to make a lot of people happy for a pretty cheap price. I Like I said, the 150 bucks for a 27mm f2.8, you can't beat that. That's half of what I paid for the Fringer adapter. So pretty nifty little lens. I'm happy with it. Um, it's definitely going to stay in the bag. It's a nice little, like, wide field of view not super wide well i guess it would equivalent to 40 millimeters so it'd be a good street lens uh it's not weather sealed so you know don't go looking for that but sorry for rambling we'll uh catch you on the next one and hopefully uh you got something out of this if so like subscribe comment down below let me know what you think and uh we'll see you next time